Number one says that a scientist captures a sample of fish from 100 different locations along the Yellowstone River and measures the proportion of fish affected by copper toxicity for each sample. Describe how the scientist could use data to estimate the proportion of fish affected by copper toxicity in the entire population along the river. So this is just a sample answer. Yours can certainly vary um, from mine, but this is just an example. So the scientist could find the mean and standard uh, deviation of the proportions. Then he could um, use the margin of error to estimate, um, which is two standard deviations, right? So the margin of error is two standard deviations. to estimate um, an interval around the mean. So find the mean and standard deviation, then you could get a, use the margin of error to estimate the interval around the mean, and then it's likely that the population's actual mean would be in that interval. Number two, a company produces 1,000 blue crayons every day. A sample of 50 crayons are analyzed and three of them are found to not meet the standard of the company, so they're labeled defective. A simulation is run in which 50 crayons are chosen out of 1,000 so that each crayon has a 6% chance of being defective. The simulation is run 500 times and the mean proportion of defective crayons is 0.059 with a standard deviation of 0.12. So we have our mean here and we have our standard deviation here. What's a good margin of error based on this simulation? So a good margin of error is two standard deviations. So we would take 0.012 times two, which would give us 0.024 as a good standard deviation. Based on the population, Proportion estimate and margin of error is 0.07, a plausible value for the population proportion of crayons that are defective, explain your reasoning. So if our mean is at uh, 0.059 and our margin of error is this, we should be able to add 0.024 to get a top end of our interval of 0.083. And then we should be able to subtract 0 0.024 and get a bottom end of our interval of 0 0.035. And then we see that 0.7, the value in question, 0 0.07 is in this margin. Okay, so it's within this interval. So yes, 0 0.07 is within the margin of error. Number three, researchers use a random sample of 200 people in prison in the United States to find that the proportion of the prison population that is jailed for drug-related crimes is 0.485. The researcher simulates selecting a sample of 200 prisoners, each with that 48.5% chance of being in prison for drug-related crimes. The simulation is run 400 times and the results are shown in the histogram. Use the histogram and information from the original sample to estimate the proportion of prisoners in the United States that is in prison for drug-related crimes. Be sure to include a margin of error with your estimate. So again, your answers can vary in this, they, but they said use the original statements and the histogram. So I am going to type this out. So give me a second here. So we could say that the mean is 0 0.485 because that's what the original researchers said. Then if you look at the histogram, and let me make this smaller so I can fit it on here. And using the histogram, 
we can see kind of where all the data is falling. So if we look, you can see, you know, you have about the mean right here, the middle of it. So then you look for where most of the data is falling is kind of within here, within the margin of error, right? And that looks to be about like six to 7% from the mean or point, um, 0.06 to 0.07. So using the histogram, we can see that most of the data is within 6 to 7%, which is 0 0.06 to 0 0.07 from the mean. So we could estimate that that is the margin of error. So again, yours can be different than that, but that's um, what I looked at it as. Number four, a pizza company is interested in the average number of pizzas eaten each year by people. They send out 30 volunteers to conduct research by collecting random samples of 25 people each and determine the number of pizzas that the people in the group ate in the previous year. After looking at the sample means, the company estimates that the mean number of pizzas eaten is 6.4 with a margin of error of 1.3. Based on these values, what interval is likely to contain the true mean of the data? So we can take the mean, which is 6.4, and then we can add and subtract the margin of error to get our interval. So if we take 6.4, plus 1.3, we get 7.7 .7 for our high end or our upper end, and 6.4 minus 1.3, and we would get 5.1 for that lower level. So the true mean should be somewhere between 5.1 and 7.7 .7 pizzas eaten. Number five, based on surveys of random samples of students at a university, the proportion of university Students interested in a new chain restaurant opening on their campus is 0.62 with a standard deviation of 0 0.04. Which of these intervals is the smallest to likely contain 95% of your sample proportions? So remember with a standard deviation or this normal bell curve, within one standard deviation is 68% of your data and within two standard deviations is 95% of your data. So we'll want to take the mean and plus or minus two standard deviations to it. So our mean is 0.62 and our standard deviation is 0.4. So we'll add two of those to get our top end. And that's going to give us 0.7 for the top end, which we only see here. So it's likely that our answer is B. And then we would do minus 0.04 twice and we would get 0 0.54 for our lower end and then we see that. So B would be the interval that would have 95% of our data in it. Number six, Kieran collects information about 25 classmates. He believes his data set is perfectly symmetrical with a mean and median of six. He then realizes that the number he has recorded as 12 was actually supposed to be 10. What is true about the mean and median of his corrected set of data? So we've got the mean here, we've got the median here, and now one of these data points, and those were both at six. Now one of the data points that he recorded as a 12 is now less and it's at 10. So instead of it being at 12, it's now at 10. So as we order the data out from least to greatest to get the median, this number doesn't impact it because it didn't go to the other side of the median. So this just moved here. So that our middle would still be at six. So our median is going to stay the same. So let's find where it says median is still the same. So median is still six. Median is still six. And here they said both of them are still six. So the median is not going to change. Now the average, if because now you have two less in your total, so when you do average, you add them all up and divide by the numbers. Well, your total is now just two smaller for the same amount of data. So that's going to bring your mean 
down. So your mean is going to be less because you have a lower total. Median stays the same. Mean is less. 